Hi everybody, hope you're well. Uh, you would have seen in a recent video that I had the Avtex AMR985 Wi-Fi system installed above my head in this caravan. And in that video, I mentioned that I would go through how you install a VPN connection onto that router. And this is that video. Now, I'm not gonna go into what a VPN actually is, but what you need to know is a VPN is a very secure way of securing traffic between you and your destination service. Be it a website, be it a streaming service, maybe it's file sharing, or maybe it's an office or a building. It's a very secure way of creating a virtual private network. It's essentially referred to as a pipe. If you've been on YouTube, you would have seen countless videos being sponsored by countless VPN providers. They all do pretty much the same thing. And what you will end up doing is using a VPN provider's network. The downside of that is that it can slow your traffic down. Um, think of the analogy. You're in Bristol and you want to travel to Birmingham. The traffic goes up and down the M5. Using a VPN, you'd have a very secure and very safe ride between you and Birmingham via Oxford. So to get over this problem of there being a slight delay and a slightly extra travel time between you and your destination, VPN providers create lots and lots of locations dotted all around the globe that make the transportation between you and your destination so much quicker. So in, if we go back to our M5 analogy, instead of going between you and Birmingham via Oxford, you'd be going between Bristol and Birmingham via Worcester. So it makes it a little bit quicker. Now, because VPN providers have many locations, there is quite a neat side effect to this. We can spoof our location. And why is that important? Well, it means that you can unlock content which is streamed on to online providers, which is locked from your current location. If you're on holiday in Spain or France or anywhere on the continent, and you want to take advantage of the BBC iPlayer, you simply won't be able to without a VPN connection. It region locks the content to UK residents only. And if you want to watch anything in the United States, which is not available in the UK, well, you can do that with a VPN. So that's what a VPN is. Why would we want to install it on the router and why not use it on our laptop or our phones? Well, it's quite simple, actually. Every single thing here in the caravan is going to access the web via that router including our smart TV, streaming sticks, phones, laptops, books, whatever. Whatever it is that access the internet, it will do it all through that router. So one connection there, one configuration there, and we have access to everything that we need in one place. Now, I just want to add a disclaimer that Avtex themselves are not responsible for adding a VPN connection onto their kit. So if you do have any issues, don't phone Avtex support. They simply won't be able to help you. So before we make any configuration changes to the router, there are in fact three things that we need to have in place before we make a start. First of all, we need to make sure that we're online. So on my MacBook here, I can see that we're at Google already, but I'm gonna to go to a specific website. I'm actually gonna to go to whatismyipaddress.com. Okay, so on that website, you can see it's showing my IP address. I've blurred it out because I don't want to give away any uh, sensitive information. But crucially, you can see that on this website, it has my location listed as Cambridge, just inside England. And that's not too bad, actually. That's about 40 miles away from where I am at the moment. And you can also see that I'm using Sky as my online provider, which is correct because it's a Sky SIM in our router up there. Perfect. The second thing we're going to need is an account with a VPN provider. Now, this isn't sponsored, but you would have seen many, many videos with many, many sponsors of many, many people showing you a VPN provider, be it from Surfshark, be it from ExpressVPN. Personally, I use NordVPN. I've used them for about nine years. They do exactly what I want and they provide everything that I need. When you choose your VPN provider, the magic phrase is open VPN configuration. That is a predetermined configuration file which will configure the router, apply the security, create the certificate, do all the work that you would manually need to do, and it will do it all for you on your behalf. Open VPN configuration, all of the big boys do it. Uh, in fact, you can get a VPN connection with open VPN themselves, but that's all we need in order to make this work. The third thing we need is we need to document the address for the DNS servers of NordVPN. And we can just type into Google something very simple like what is NordVPN DNS servers. And there we go, we've got it here already. It's 103 86 96 100 and 103 86 99 100. Write those down because we're going to need those a bit later on. 
So today I'm going to create a VPN connection from the United States. It's incredibly easy to do. And the first thing we need to do is get a configuration file from NordVPN. Now you can do this from any provider as I've already stated, but I'm going to show you how we do it from NordVPN today. So on their website, what we need to do is go to servers. Then we click on recommended server. And you can see that it's now working out what the best recommended server and location is for us. And you can see it's chosen a UK one for us. But as I said, I don't want UK, I want United States. So we're gonna click on select country, type in United Kingdom, United States, I should say, sorry. Hit okay. And there you go, it's chosen a United States point for us. If we click on show available protocols and we scroll down, we can see that we have that magic phrase, open VPN. We want to download the open VPN TCP file. So we click on download config and save that to our desktop. Right, that's all the legwork done that we actually need to do. Now we can get on and start working on the router. And for that, I'm going to need my glasses. So from the web browser, let's go on and let's get straight on with it. Type in 192.168.1.1. So once there, log in with your admin username and password. That's all documented in the paperwork with your router. If it's your first time logging in, you'll probably need to change the password first of all. Now that we're logged in, we can then go ahead and start adding our VPN profiles. So click on services, VPN, and then we're immediately confronted with open VPN tab. Make sure the role is set to client and type in a user friendly name. I'm gonna call this one Nord underscore US and click on add new. Now that it's created, we can go ahead and we can edit all the information in here. And this is really simple. Click on edit. And first of all, click on enable. Click on enable open VPN config from file. Hit browse. And where we downloaded our files from today, click OK. The next thing we need to do is upload authentication files. Click on authentication, set that one to password and use the username and password, which is supplied from our NordVPN account. The username and password is your username and password you would use to access your VPN provider. In this case, it's my NordVPN account, but you may have something else like Surfshark or ExpressVPN. It doesn't matter. Once that's all set, hit save. Now the router is applying that configuration file right now, and you can see it's working here in the top right hand corner. Let it carry on and do its thing. And then we are then set back to the configuration overview. Right, that's the VPN now installed. And because we've hit enabled, it's now running. It probably won't connect just yet because we need to make one further change to the DNS settings. Remember the addresses that we documented before? Well, we need to add those into the router right now. We do that by going to network, WAN, and then hitting edit on the mobile WAN connection. We need to uncheck the use DNS servers advertised by peer, and we can now add the addresses that we documented before, which is 103.86, dot 96 dot 100 click the add symbol and we add the second one which is 103 dot 86 dot 99 dot 100 hit the add symbol again scroll down hit save again the router is working it's applying that configuration and we'll let it go back to the summary screen in a minute once it's finished Right, now that all that work is done, it's a good idea to reboot the router to make sure that everything is applied correctly. So we do that by clicking on system, reboot, and then we hit the reboot button. And then we just wait a couple of minutes for the system to restart. Right, it's restarted. Let's log back in and let's just make sure that everything is working. And the first thing we're going to do is make sure that the VPN is working correctly. So if you click on status, then network, the open VPN tab across the top. You can see that it says, yes, it's enabled and it is connected, which is great news. So let's go back to that website. What is my IP address? Well, as you can see, it's giving us a completely different IP address. And also this website thinks that we are now located in downtown New York. And there we go. That proves that the VPN is working, but let's actually go and have a look and see what differences we have noticed. So as you can see, YouTube looks pretty normal really, doesn't it? Except if you look a bit closer at the content, it's very much geared up and aimed for people and residents inside the United States. There's content here which has really no relevance for people in the United Kingdom. 
If I was to add a UK profile and reload this page, we would see a significant difference. So why don't we give that a go right now? Let's load on a UK based VPN profile. So if I uncheck the United States profile, enable the UK profile, hit save, we'll let it just apply that configuration to the router, give it a couple of minutes to sort itself out, and then we'll reload YouTube to see what's going on. So let's go to YouTube and do nothing else other than hit refresh and see what happens. Well, of course, because we're in the United Kingdom, we have to agree to cookies, so we'll accept all of those, wait for the page to reload. And as you can see here, we've got content now which is geared up for people in the UK. If we look on down here through the information there, you can see quite clearly there's UK based content for UK audiences. So let's try something else. Let's try Netflix. And there's a few things I want you to notice here when we actually load up Netflix. Obviously, we've got our pick of the show here at the top, and we've also got a rating over there of 15. That just denotes to us, well, people in the United Kingdom, that this is not suitable for people under the age of 15. If we look down here, what's popular on Netflix, you can see we've got normal shows there, uh, which it just looks about right, doesn't it? It looks absolutely fine. Okay, if we go back to our router, and if we change our profile from the UK to the US, let's reload this page and see what happens. So we're here at UK again, we're going to click on the US profile, uncheck the UK one, hit save, wait for it to apply its setting, and then we'll see what happens. Let's go to Netflix and let's do nothing else other than hit the refresh button and let's see what happens. Okay, so the show has changed at the top there, that's fine, that always changes anyway. But if we look over on the right hand side, we've got PG-13 and that is the certification that is used in the United States to show that this is not suitable for people under the age of 13. So that's everything working here on the laptop. I want to show it to you working though on the smart TV. So I've just switched it on. I've switched on Netflix and I'm going to turn the camera around. And I'm going to show you it working and showing you content from the United States. OK, let's go for my profile. And here we go. You can see the show again is different. Um, on the top there, that's fine. Uh, we can see rewatched pics. Oh, let me turn the volume down so I don't get uh, a copyright uh, infringement there. Uh, top show is different, that's normal. But pay attention though, it's TVMA, which means it's mature and it's not suitable for minors. But crucially, that's not the UK rating. That's the specification that comes out in America, you know, when you see things like PG 13, etc. But just to prove the point, it all works fine. Let's just play a little bit of Love, Death and Robots. You can see it works absolutely fine. It's not too bad. I mean, sure, it's you know coming from America via the VPN. And as you can see here, it's not laggy at all. And before we carry on, let's try and find the car and continue watching that horrific show. Not sure why this isn't available in the UK. I mean, it's really bad. I, I wouldn't recommend you watch it. I made it about halfway through before I decided, you know what? I can't carry on. This is truly, truly terrible. But there we go. One thing that won't work, however, is iPlayer. That basically is locked out for me at the moment because iPlayer thinks that I'm not in the UK. Let's prove that. Let's try and play something through iPlayer. Let's try and watch a bit of EastEnders, shall we? Let's see what happens. skip the trailer and there we go that's because we are situated in the united states now i can cure that by changing my vpn profile to the uk profile and there we go that will work fine but okay i've just changed our profile over to the uk and i just want to show you a couple of things first of all let's go into netflix and what we're going to do is we're going to search for uh, the car and we're going to see whether that works but first of all you can see that it's a different show again get that but you can see it's rated 12 now so it's not suitable for people under the age of 12. Let's go and search for the car and let's see if we can actually find that title. I know it's not in the UK but I want to prove it to you guys so that you know that I'm not just blabbering it on. 
Do, do, do. Okay, and there we go. You can see that the car is here, but there is no car and there's no suggestion there at all. We've got the Kraft Carriers, Karate Kid, Carter, the Kraft Karate Kid, uh, the fastest car, um, silence. You, you know, you can see it all there. There is literally no car there whatsoever. The second thing I want to show you is because we couldn't load up EastEnders because we were on a VPN connected to the state. Let's go to iPlayer now and let's prove that that now works as it should. We're on the UK VPN, EastEnders. Skip the trailer, not interested. Uh, there we go. That's EastEnders running right there. So there we go. I hope that is of use for you. Please do hit the subscribe button, hit the notification icon if you could do all of that. We'll see you in the very next video. And if you do have any comments or questions, put them down below. I or the community will try our best to help you. Many thanks for watching, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.